open the um, hearing on House Bill 388, seeing that the prime sponsor, Representative McGuire, is not available. I'm calling upon our Representative Al Baldessaro to not only introduce the bill, but to present some testimony to the committee. Thank you, Representative. Thank and you, good uh, Madam Chair and fellow Senators. For the record, Representative Al Baldessaro, Washington County District 3, which is Blue Flooding Area. I am introducing House Bill 388 as an author pass on behalf of Representative McGuire. Uh, and I'm going to step into my uh, testimony real quick is that the House overwhelmingly supported this on both sides. This was a win-win for the community. Because when you really think about it, if a gun is stolen from a house, which in this economy, there's a lot of break-ins during the day. Uh, even myself, I hide my weapons in certain areas because even the safe that I've had, and I've had a safe broken at a restaurant, uh, broken into, uh, that it can happen, no matter what you do with your weapon. But the bottom line is the individual should not be protected. Now, there's a chief, I know, and it's a shame, hard charging, honorable record and everything now is being dragged through the mud right now because of a suicide on his, his weapon that was in the house because it wasn't secure, and somebody committed suicide, so now they want to put charges on this chief. And it's been all over the news, uh, it's nothing new. And I'm hoping that with this here, that will hopefully protect anyone else in the future from liability. If you take a look at the FBI checks, uh, you're gonna see that a lot of crime has been done by knives in houses. So do we start there also and start, uh, you know, taking people's knives away, or you know, holding them liable because somebody got killed with their kitchen knife or anyone else? I'm hoping that we, protect the interests of people here and not, you know, hold them liable if their weapons are stolen. And that's all I have, and I'll let you know people come forward. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony this morning, this afternoon, Representative. Senator Olaski? Thank you. And um, thank you, um, Chair, and thank you, Representative. And I hope you'll be able to um, help me to understand this a little bit better. Um, I fully agree, you know, with with the scenarios that you have put out, and uh, certainly if someone steals it, you, know, you shouldn't be held responsible for um, that firearm. But what if the case is that someone is negligent, that owns that firearm, leaves it out, leaves, leaves stuff out, and, and there may be other things that are, that are covered. I don't know, um, the attorney's looking at me, but I guess, you know, I don't, I think this is too broad. Because premises aren't defined. If you you know you're in a business, you're anywhere, and even say a gun business, and you're showing uh, guns to people, and you innocently leave one out, and somebody, some child picks it up, and I know there there are different laws for child, but whatever. And and um, anyway, shouldn't sometimes a person have not? We shouldn't give blanket immunity to everybody. I, and I know what this does, but explain to me, you know, if, if, that, if I'm not thinking correct. I have to disagree uh, uh, with the question. I mean, if you think about it, and of course I'm not a lawyer, but if your weapon is left out, like here, if I go home and I take my gun off and I put it in my, on top of my dresser, that's my home, that's my castle. If I store it in my glove compartment, that's my car, my castle, that's my... The historical data does not show uh, to support the question because uh, I never read uh, any cases uh, where somebody left a gun out and then a kid, a little kid grabbed it or whatever. I mean, you might hear it there, but it's not rampant. You know what I mean on that there? Most people, gun owners, are pretty reliable and responsible. And just like here in New Hampshire, you can't, the, just to get a class to shoot, it, it's tough to even get in because they're so, so filled. You know, the slots there for those uh, learning how to shoot. I don't see this as a uh, major issue, and I think they deserve liability if somebody steals their gun. You mean immunity? Immunity, I'm sorry. Yes. I, you know, I, I disagree. I mean, I feel like I'm responsible for, for, I have to think of when we put in laws in place, you know, I try to think of every scenario, whether it's rampant or not, you know. Um, something that could happen and you know uh, frankly in my mind uh god forbid i put in a law you know whether it's this or something else and something horrible happens 
I mean, yes, you can't control every situation. But my point is, is that just because you think it's not rampant, and I've heard plenty of cases where kids pick up firearms and, uh, you know, for whatever reason, and it's a tragedy, of course. So I just, again, my question is, were there, were there, was the testimony, whatever, about, you know, limiting the liability, uh, limiting the circumstances, and as I see it, making this less broad? No, I, I don't know about, uh, of course, I wish the, the uh, sponsor was here. I, mean, I just wish that uh, what I see of this here is a win-win for law-abiding citizens that do have their guns in their certain areas of their house. And some of us, like myself, I don't lock up my gun at night because if somebody breaks into my house, and I've been called many times and threatened. I, as a matter of fact, just recently went to the uh, security here in the state house on some phone calls that I've gotten from somebody who disagreed. So what I'm trying to get at here is if my gun is out and somebody comes in and is coming after me, why I should be able to in my home or in other areas have that weapon you know, in the ready position and not be liable if somebody steals it. Oh, I should be protected. We're not talking about you, Rick. I know you're very careful with your firearms and, and you know, what have you. I'm talking about this gives this immunity, as I read it, to everybody and anybody, wherever they may be. If your weapon, yes it does, if your weapon is stolen. And, and you does. can't conceive of that possibly being an issue. The bottom, if I may, and I, I know uh, I don't want to keep beating this with you, and I'm hoping I can give you the correct answer to my opinion, is that if your weapon, this is the whole thing, if your weapon is stolen, whether you leave it on your dresser or you leave it in your car, your glove compartment, or under your seat, if somebody broke into your private property and took your weapon and they committed a crime or murder, you should not be held liable. That's the whole idea of this, you know, and there's immunity. immunity. Are there any other questions? Senator Cataldo. If I may uh, read into the record, Madam Chair. Uh, a minority report from the House Bill 338. The minority committee agrees that the testimony stated the gun owner should not be victimized twice. This bill will protect the rights of law-abiding gun owners, and just as you protect if your vehicle was stolen and used in a crime. This bill will give the gun owner immunity of their gun or guns were stolen and used in a crime. you agree? I agree. Seeing no further questions, thank you very much for uh, volunteering I try this to morning. <laughs> okay. The chair will call the Honorable Jen Coffey. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. For the record, my name is Jen Coffey. I am the National Director of Legislative Affairs for the Second Amendment Sisters. I have also, um, in, in returning to my written testimony, I have turned in on behalf of Michelle Lavelle. The New Hampshire Liberty Alliance written testimony. She asked if I wouldn't mind doing so on her behalf if she had to leave, and I was happy to do so. I will make my testimony very brief, very simply. This is the only inanimate object that I am aware of under law in which a person can be the victim of a crime and then be victimized again by being held liable for the criminal act. The bill, I believe, is not too broad. If you pay attention to lines four through seven, it specifically states that a firearm that is stolen, illegally obtained, and then used in the commission of a felony or a misdemeanor, that the original owner can't be held liable. In other words, I park my car outside, unlocked, and throw the key under my front seat, because it's my house, my property, and that's the way I want to park my car. No, that's not how I really do it, but it's an example. Somebody steals my vehicle. They then use my vehicle to rob a bank as a getaway car, or worse yet, run over an innocent victim. Nowhere do we have a law, or have we ever seen, somebody being held criminally or civilly liable for that vehicle that was used to commit that bank robbery or run over that human being. We had a recent incident where someone's firearm was stolen and used in the commission of a crime. And it was an attempt to take the firearms owner, the person who was victimized, the person who was stolen from, and hold them civilly liable for those actions. The reason this bill has been brought forward is because of that. 
if we say that, if we fail to pass this bill, what we're saying is that it is perfectly legal for anyone to hold somebody civil or criminally liable for an object that has been stolen and used in the commission of a crime. That is not limited to firearms. This is not a firearms bill. This is about what are the limitations of law. So if you steal my car, if you steal my kitchen knife, if you steal my bow and arrow, if you take up a bust that I have in my house and bash somebody's head in it, and you've stolen from me, I am now held civilly or criminally liable for the criminal acts of that person. All this bill does is, take, is make sure that it's understood in law, that firearms are no different than any other object that we own, that if a criminal steals it from us, we are not held liable for their criminal actions. And I'll stop. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony, Senator Lasky. Thank you. And, and believe me, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And I'm not here to be argumentative, but I, I just, you know, want you to look at the bill. It says, it doesn't say any, nowhere does it say the word stolen. And it does specifically refer to firearms. So, I mean, I don't, you know, again, have a problem. I have a problem with how this bill is written. And, and I guess, you know, I'd like to, to bring that to your attention. And um, I wish, certainly wish the sponsors were here. And, so, and I'd love to an opportunity to answer your question. Sure. Um, only one, uh, we've only recently had an incident in which a law abiding citizen was the victim of a criminal act and stolen from the firearm used in the commission of a crime and the original owner <coughs> attempted to be held civilly liable, which is what brought about the bill, which is why it mentions firearms, but it specifically states criminal acts, uh, let me back this up and, and, and make sure I give this to you appropriately. No person who stores or leaves on premise under the person's control a loaded or unloaded firearm shall be held liable in a subsequent civil case for the criminal acts of another person who illegally obtains possession or control of such firearm and uses such firearms in the commission of a felony or a misdemeanor. It specifically states you've illegally gained control of the firearm and you've committed a crime. Very specific. I, I, I understand. Thank you. Senator Catalo. Madam Jan Coffey, how are you doing? Thank you, sir. If we look at this paragraph 650-C code 2, all it is is an extension of the negligent storage of firearm. It comes under the RSA. Yeah, it's just an amendment made to it. It is. And, and, and it's... It, 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 Given the current situation that we've had, and seeing that a law-abiding citizen was victimized twice, I'm, sur I'm, I'm concerned that if we don't act upon this, we're gonna see an increase in this. If my car gets stolen and somebody uses it to run somebody over, I'm gonna be held civilly liable because I didn't lock it, because I left my key in it, because that's a door that you're opening without this. Are there any further questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for your testimony this morning. Um, the chair will call Joseph Hannon.